All right, welcome back to school. We are in quarantine right now, so we're gonna finish up solving. So right now we are gonna solve trigonometric functions and try to find all the possible solutions. So up to this point, we have just found everything that's on the unit circle, but now we're gonna look for all solutions, and so it's gonna be an infinite amount of possibilities. So we're gonna start with, we're gonna do three problems, three fairly simple problems. The first one right here, we have two sine x plus the square root of three. So just like before, when we're solving, we're gonna isolate our trig function, so sine x. So we need to get sine x by itself. So the first way to get sine x by itself is by getting rid of the square root of three. So I get two sine x equals the negative square root of three. And then next we're going to divide by two. So I get sine x, is equal to negative square root of three over two. Well, obviously that's on our unit circle, so we need to figure out where it is on our unit circle. So we know that sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrant. So if it's negative on this third and fourth quadrant, uh, it's gonna be right here and right here. And so that's gonna be our over threes. So we get x equals um, four pi over three, and then we're gonna write it as a separate problem. We're gonna say x also equals five pi over three. So we get four pi over three and five pi over three, but that's not gonna be it. We're going to find all the possible solutions. So since we know that we have four pi over three and five pi over three, if we go over here to our graph, we know that our y value is gonna be four pi over three um, we get uh, four pi over three is about right here. And so we get our solution here. But if we look, since it repeats itself, it's gonna repeat itself again, and we're gonna get a negative square root of three over two again at this point. And then again, if we keep the graph going, we'll get another one right there. And then we have another one right here. So what we need to do is think about how often that occurs. And it occurs every time that we have a new period. So every time that we cycle through this, this graph, it's gonna go again, and then we're gonna also have a negative square root of three every time that we have a period. So for sine and for cosine, we need to think about what the period is. And so the period for sine and cosine, both of them are gonna be two pi. So we need to figure out that every time from four pi over three, Every two pi after that, it's going to it's going to be the correct answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to just tag on. We're going to say plus two in pi. So we have four pi over three plus two in pi, and that two in pi, the n stands for how we can think about it, any number. So any number, any positive integer or negative integer, can work. So if I plug in one, two, three, four. It doesn't matter, or negative one, negative two, negative three, it's going to create another four pi over three. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna attach two n pi again for five pi over three. So that is the answer. That's how we figure out the first one. The second one, we got four cosine squared x minus one equals zero. And so again, we are going to try and solve for cosine first. So we need to get cosine by itself. In order to get cosine by itself, we're going to or add the one. So I have four cosine squared x equals one, divide by four. And then to get cosine by itself, we are going to take the square root. And remember anytime that we take a square root of both sides, you have to have a positive and a negative answer. So we get cosine x equals plus or minus the square root of one fourth. The square root of one fourth can simplify to plus or minus the square root of, of one is one over root two. And then after we rationalize, we get cosine x is equal to plus or minus the square root of two over two. So this one is gonna be a little bit different. If we think about on our unit circle, every time that we have a square root of two over two, 
for cosine our x value. It's right here, right here, right here, and right here. Because we're looking at the positive and the negative, it's going to be all of our over 4. So pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. And what we notice about this, we could, we could write four different problems. We could write x equals pi over 4 plus 2 and pi, x equals 3 pi over 4 plus 2 and pi, and it keep going like that. But we could simplify that if we recognize that those are all pi over 2 away from one another. And so we can simply say x equals pi over 2, excuse me, pi over 4 plus pi over 2 times n. What that's saying is if we start at pi over 4, every pi over 2 after that forever and ever and ever is going to also create the, the answer that fulfills this problem. So that's how we're going to write it. And you could simplify it and say n pi over 2, either one. I think that'll make it a little bit easier for us to recognize. And again, coming back over here, if I look at where pi over 4 is, it's right here. That's square root of 2 over 2. Here's a negative square root of 2 over 2. That's pi over 2 away from one another. And then again, and again, and then again, and so forth. So every pi over 2 is going to work. And our final problem is going to be the most complicated of the day. We have sine squared x minus 2 cosine x minus 2 equals 0. To begin with, we notice that we have a, a sine and then a cosine. And it looks like a basic factoring problem, but in order to factor, we first need sine and cosine to match up. So the way that we're going to make those match up is we are going to use one of our Pythagorean identities. And so we should know that sine squared x, that's the same thing as 1 minus cosine squared x. So 1 minus cosine squared x we could replace for sine squared x. And then we have negative 2 cosine x minus 2, and that is going to equal 0. At this point, let's get everything in order, combine like terms, and see what we can do as far as simplifying. So I get negative cosine squared x minus 2 cosine x, and then that's going to be minus 1 is going to equal 0. At this point, we're going to divide everything by a negative. That way it'll be simpler to, to factor. So I get cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x plus 1, and that's going to equal 0. Put my parentheses here. And then we can factor this. We can u sub. This looks a little bit simple. We could probably factor it without u substituting. And I'm going to say that this is cosine x. And then it's going to be factors of 1 that add to 2. That's simply going to be 1 and another 1. And so that's going to be cosine x plus 1 squared equals 0. So coming back at, at the top, just to make sure that we understand what's going on, we had two different trig functions. So since we have two trig functions, we need to get them in the same trig function. We want them both to be cosine. And we used our Pythagorean identity. And then at this point, after we factored it, it's set equal to 0. We can take the square root of 0, which is 0. So I have cosine x equals negative 1. That should be pretty simple to find. And we're looking for every time that cosine, our x value, is going to equal negative 1. So here's negative 1 right here. And again, negative 1 occurs 2 pi away. And then a negative 2 pi away. And so every 2 pi, forever and ever and ever, it's going to work. So cosine x equals negative 1 when x, our, our angle, when x is equal to, let's look right here, to pi, so pi plus 2 in pi. So that is solving trigonometric functions 
and writing it out using all possible solutions.